cells are different from animal cells because of their cell walls, which is part of the plant that we use to make paper. In particular, four parts of the plant cell are integral to the formation of fibers we use in paper making. These are the plant cell wall, the plasma membrane, and the Golgi apparatus. Of course, the nucleus is involved also as a sort of wizard behind the curtain, conducting the symphony. But to understand how a plant makes fiber, we need to understand a little bit about the whole plant cell. So let's talk briefly about the parts of a plant cell and how it's structured. Plant cells have many different interior organelles, but let's start from the outside of the cell and go inward. The cell wall is the outermost structure. It's the rigid part of the cell, and thanks to its unique chemistry and structure, it supports the plant in an upright position. In fact, it's so important that all terrestrial life might not have developed without it. This is because without cellulose and a chemical called lignin to add more rigidity, plants wouldn't have moved out of an aquatic environment and therefore no food for land-dwelling animals. Cell walls are made up of cellulose. These are long chains of polysaccharides molecules bound together in a cable-like fashion, but more about that in a moment. The next layer, just inside the plant cell wall, is the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane is like a filter, shuffling compounds passively or actively with energy across its surface. Because of the unique chemical structure, the plasma membrane serves as a gatekeeper, allowing certain nutrients and molecules in and out of the cell. To some extent, the cell wall serves that purpose too, though it supports passive movement only and is much more porous than the membrane. This organelle is essential to paper makers, and we'll see why in a little. On to the main organelles of the interior of the plant cell. The nucleus contains genetic material packaged in chromosomes which controls the main activities of the cell. It's also bounded by a membrane to control what goes in and comes out. Vacuoles are the biggest structure of the cell, we believe, and they serve to contain, by a single membrane, noxious compounds that may be free-floating in the cell. Otherwise, these compounds might be in the body of the cell and cause it harm. Chloroplasts convert sunlight to energy in the form of sugar, and they are bounded by a membrane, but also contain their own DNA. The mitochondria is like a little fuel cell reactor, breaking the bonds of sugar molecules so that the energy can be used in the rest of the plant. Like most organelles, it's also bounded by a membrane, and like the chloroplast, it contains DNA. If you're curious about why these two organelles contain DNA, Look up the endosymbiont theory. The last organelle we'll talk about is the Golgi apparatus. It's known to assemble compounds, and in our case, it takes raw ingredients and pre-assembles small packets of molecules that will be pushed toward the plasma membrane. Once these packets reach the plasma membrane, they're pushed through a protein complex that's shaped a little like a rosette. Inside these rosettes, the precursor molecules are further assembled into long chains of sugar molecules. Hey, cellulose! As they're extruded out the other side, the chains wrap around each other to form a cable made of groups of cellulose microfibrils. The cable of cellulose is guided by microtubules, which form something like railroad tracks for the cable to follow. These railroad track microtubules guide the placement of the cellulose microfibrils. <laughs> why, oh why, do they name them so similarly? <laughs> so here is a microtubule, and here is a microfibril. Microfibrils make up the cell wall that we talked about before. Remember the long chains of polysaccharides? So how about if you want a long, narrow cell? Well, simply lay down the fibers more along the short axis than on the long axis to begin with. And to get a rounded cell, have those cellulose microfibrils wound fairly evenly around the entire cell. In the environment, plants are challenged to get water up and nutrients moved around. Long, narrow cells with rigid cell walls are created that go on to become functioning xylem and phloem cells. Remember which does which? The xylem cell cells draw water up and distribute it, and phloem cells move nutrients around the plant. Both xylem and phloem make up tissues of the plant that run in long, narrow, connecting tubes around the plant body. Because they're so important for plant growth and development, xylem and phloem cells typically have more concentrated or dense cellulose fibers than any other plant cells, 
And of course, we make best advantage of that characteristics by using those fibers for paper making. But to use them in this way, we first have to degrade the rest of the plant parts away. And this is either done by rotting the material, either in nature or by chemically rotting it to remove the unwanted parts. By doing this, we're left with fairly pure cellulose microfibrils, but they're still tightly bound to each other. So now we have to break apart the tightly bound microfibrils, and we do that by beating them. Otherwise, they're just too large to make paper. However, it's important to understand how they're bound to each other, because then we can understand what happens in the paper maker's vat of fiber. The reason that cellulose microfibrils are bound to each other is because they have hydrogen and oxygen bonds between the individual change of cellulose microfibrils. A paper maker will break these down by beating so that the microfibrils have frayed edges and that they're more ribbon-like instead of a cable. When we do this, it literally breaks the hydrogen-oxygen bonds between these cellulose molecules. But when you add this fiber to water for a paper making bat, the cellulose molecules associate with the light hydrogen and oxygen charges of the water molecule. So we go from becoming a bond of cellulose to cellulose to a bond that is of cellulose to water. Then, as the mold and decal of the paper maker is dipped into the vat, water dra drains out of the bottom. As the water drains, the hydrogen and oxygen charges of the fibers find each other once again and bind together to create a sheet of paper.